Hi, and welcome back to Columbia Physics Preceptor Television. Today we'll be talking about the oscilloscope lab. Uh, the oscilloscope is one of the most popular tools that you'll find in science, whether it's physics, engineering, anything that involves electronics, you'll probably find an oscilloscope in the laboratory. This tool can look rather complicated at first, but if you know how it works, you know the principles behind it, and know a little bit about the general functions that most oscilloscopes have, it's actually very easy to use. An oscilloscope works a little bit uh, like a cathode ray TV set. The ones that we have here function on the same, very same principle. There's a cathode ray inside, uh, and I can draw it for you actually. <clears throat> the cathode ray, which is just a ray of electrons, starts out with a heated filament. The heated filament emits electrons due to what's called thermionic emission. The electrons just get enough uh, hot or heat energy that they can get kicked out of the atoms and pulled off into free space by a voltage difference between two plates. A positive, or the filament is at a negative voltage, and there's an accelerating plate at a positive voltage. The accelerating plate has a small hole in it, so that some electrons will miss the plate and keep flying in the shape of a beam towards the face of the oscilloscope. What you then have is a set of, or two sets actually, of plates. Uh, we can call these the vertical plates and the horizontal plates. As the electron beam flies through these sets of plates, the plates can be charged with a voltage, either positive or negative. You know from past classes and past lectures that when a charged particle, such as an electron, flies through an area with an electric field, it feels a force. That force accelerates the electron and changes its velocity in whichever direction, either vertical or horizontal, the particular plates are influencing. So here, if there's a voltage across the vertical plates, this electron will feel a force either in the up or down direction depending on the voltage and be deflected downwards or upwards. The same can be said for the horizontal plates. Finally, the beam of electrons hits on a screen that's coated with a phosphorescent substance. This is just a substance that glows whenever it's hit by fast moving electrons. The result is that your eyes can see those phosphorescent uh, dots. Wherever the beam lands, it'll create a small dot of glowing material. Now in order to get, or in order to use the oscilloscope, we need to calibrate and set up the vertical and horizontal plates such that their voltages change in a way that we can observe how a voltage across a circuit changes in time. First what we need to do is uh, give the oscilloscope some sort of uh, time sweep. What we'd like to do is sweep the voltage of the horizontal plates such that the electron beam scans across the face of the oscilloscope from, say, left to right uh, in a way that is representative of the actual time that it takes the circuit uh, to move through a certain set of uh, voltage changes. The way we do this is by using what's called a sawtooth function or a sweep function. In this case, we'll start out at a very low negative voltage so that the beam is, uh, using the horizontal plates, the beam is kicked all the way towards the left side of the screen. Then as it slowly rises through zero, the beam comes and travels into the center and then is displaced by a positive voltage up into the right hand side of the screen. Once it gets to the right, you want the beam to jump back over to the left side so this voltage drops back down to a negative value and then traces slowly up again. And this repeats on and on and on for as long as you need the oscilloscope to function. As I said before, the result of this on the screen is a phosphorescent dot, which is glowing and is visible, that traces across the screen from left to right and then skips back again once it gets to the end of the screen. There are a few different controls on the oscilloscope that you can use 
uh, to make sure that this dot sweeps across at different speeds, which are relevant to your investigations. If you have a circuit whose voltage is changing very quickly, you want to look at a very small snapshot in time. So there's uh, a knob, which is either time per division or seconds per division. It depends on the oscilloscope. But by changing this, you can change the limits of your x-axis here, of your, or rather your time axis, to look at a smaller or longer period of time. If this time axis is actually large enough, you can sometimes see this dot moving across the screen. As I said before, we want to use this oscilloscope to look at voltage changes in circuits. In order to do that, we hook up the circuit, or some voltage spot uh, between two points, in the circuit up to the vertical plates, such that as the voltage between those two points changes on the circuit, it will cause the electron beam to be deflected up and down. What you'll end up with on your oscilloscope screen is called a trace. The dot will be moving from left to right due to the time sweep, but also up and down as the circuit goes through its different changes in voltage. If, say, we have an alternating current circuit and it's varying, its, its voltage is varying up and down as a sinusoid in time, you'll end up with a trace that looks exactly like a sinusoid. This will also let us uh, visualize very complicated traces, uh, such as the voltage on a microphone caused by your voice humming into it. There are a few other very important uh, controls. First is the volts per division. This uh, sets the vertical scale, much like the time or seconds per division scale did for the uh, horizontal axis. Also, you'll want to look at the trigger controls. The trigger basically just uh, tells the oscilloscope when to start the trace. Uh, it'll use two different factors. First, the overall value of the voltage and the slope. So in the case of this sinusoid, here we would have uh, a trigger slope that's positive, since we can see that the sinusoid is rising, and a value of, well, pretty close to zero, since that's where our sinusoidal trace is starting at the very left-hand side of the screen. You can also set it to be negative and can change uh, the trigger value up and down depending on what kind of trace you're looking at, what kind of uh, periodic signal. So what are we going to be using this oscilloscope to do? Uh, three things. First, we'd like to verify that putting a voltage into our oscilloscope produces an accurate signal. We'd like to see that depending, er, for a, a voltage that rises linearly and that we can control, the trace of our oscilloscope will also rise linearly. To do that, so this would be linearity of deflection for the vertical beam. To do that, we'll use a slide resistor or a slide wire uh, to change the voltage of, an, of a, a direct current circuit. We'll also use a fixed DC source so that by changing the resistance in a linear fashion using the slide wire, you should notice a linear deflection in the vertical direction of the oscilloscope beam. Second, we'll want to view some signals. First, we can generate signals using a function generator. This is a piece of electronics that puts out either a sine wave or a square wave of different frequencies. You can change the frequency and the amplitude and set your oscilloscope settings so that you can view each of those signals as clear as possible. Also, you can use this, or you can uh, view signals from, say, a microphone that you're, use, that you're stimulating with your voice. Uh, these signals will not be as clean as a square wave or a sine wave, but they might be interesting nonetheless. Uh, I think the lab manual suggests trying to hum the lowest note that you can measuring the frequency using the oscilloscope, and then the highest note that you can uh, to see what your frequency range is. Finally, we'd like to do something, we, or we'd like to measure the response of an amplifier as a function of frequency. Most amplifiers uh, will take some input signal and 
increase its strength by a factor of what's called the gain. So if you have a signal generator outputting a signal with, say, a voltage V0, and then an amplifier, it will apply a certain gain. We'll denote it by G to that signal so that the output, uh, the output signal from the amplifier is going to be of a voltage Vm, where Vm over V0 is equal to G. If it's a high fidelity amplifier, G is going to be about the same for any frequency that you input. What we're going to do is use our signal generator to put in frequencies uh, across a very large range and see how G changes depending on what the frequency is. You'll use your oscilloscope to measure V0 and then Vm as a function of frequency so that you can plot G as a function of frequency for this amplifier. You should see some variation depending on the frequency. Uh, that's about all I have to say. The controls for the oscilloscope can be kind of intimidating at first, but you should go into it with an open mind. Try to tinker with it. Figure out what each button does. Uh, a lot of oscilloscopes are different, so if you're out in the real world, if you know generally how an oscilloscope works and what the general controls are, you should be able to master it just by finding the buttons. Uh, that's about it. Have fun.